we're going to walk through a problem solving strategy called recursion and what recursion is is a strategy that breaks a problem down into smaller pieces until it can't break it down any further and so an example in math would be factorial if I say evaluate factorial of 3 I can break this problem down until I can't break it down any further because 3 factorial is really 3 times 2 factorial so I've just broken the problem down and now 2 factorial I can evaluate 2 factorial is really 2 times 1 factorial 1 factorial is 1 times 0 factorial and 0 factorial of course is 1. I can't break 0 factorial down into a smaller piece. It's already just evaluates to 1. So to um, evaluate all of these function calls I can say 1 times 1 times 2 times 3 and that would be my answer 6. So 3 factorial of course evaluates to 6. So when you're hand tracing recursive code, it can get really um, confusing. So it's important to stay organized and write out the variables for each function call. So I'm going to do a quick little example, but the best way to solve these types of problems would be to just write the corresponding Python code to get the answer. So you can see on line 28, I'm going to call loop 2. So the loop function will be called with a parameter n and the value will be 2. And it creates a variable called counter with the value of 0. And then I'm going to loop. And I'm going to loop while counter is less than or equal to n. In the loop, I'm going to call the function fact and I'm going to pass it um, a copy of the counter variable. So it will be passed as 0. So the first time I call fact, n will be created with a value of 0. And in the function, if n is equal to 0, return 1. So this is called the base case. This will not call the function again. So this is the part of the recursion that stops the recursion. If it wasn't equal to 0, the else would execute and it would call the same function again, breaking the problem down into a smaller piece. So since n was 0, we're just going to go ahead and return 1. So on line 23, the fact call returns the value 1 and that is displayed. So I'll put my display over here. So 1 is displayed. And then counter is incremented. It's still less than or equal to 2. So fact is called again, and it is past the value of 1. Facts parameter n gets the value of 1. And if n is equal to 0, that's false. So return n, which is 1, and I'm going to put it um, right here, times and then call fact again with n minus 1, so with a 0. Now, since this function didn't end and it's being called again, a whole nother environment for this function is going to be set up. So the first time we called it with n of 1, that is still in memory. So that n still has the value 1. But when we call it again, a separate environment is set up. The second call has a parameter n with a value of 0. And then it hops into the function. If n is 0, that's true, so return 1. So it returns. So this n is no longer there, so it returned that value of 1. And then 1 times 1 is 1, and so the original call returns the value of 1. So on line 23, when we called fact 1, it also displayed the number 1. And then counter is incremented, 
counter is still less than or equal to n, so fact will be called again and pass the value of counter, which is now 2. So in fact, n gets 2. Is n equal to 0? No. So return 2 times fact of n minus 1, which would be 1. So now fact of 1 is called. So remember, a whole new environment is set up, and fact is called again with a new n, and it is past the value 1. Is n equal to 0? No. So return n times factorial of n minus 1. So it's going to return 1 times factorial of n minus 1, which is 0. So it's going to call factorial again and pass it 0. So now a third environment is set up. n is 0. And it'll test, is n 0? True, so return 1. So it returns 1 to this call right here. So this evaluated to 1. And then this is deleted from memory. So then 1 times 1 is 1, so this whole expression is returned here. So 1 times 1 was 1, so this evaluated to 1. And then this is deleted from memory because that function returned. And then we are at the original call on this line number 5. And so this says return n times, and then whatever that evaluated to, which it evaluated to 1. So 2 times 1 is returned. So 2 times 1 is returned here, which is the number 2, and then display 2, so it displays a 2. Okay, and then counter is incremented. And the um, condition will now be false, so we'll jump out of the while loop, and the program ends. The values 1, 1, 2 are displayed um, to the screen. Good job if you were able to follow along with that. F uh, tracing a recursive uh, function call is super complicated, and you have to, you know, remain very organized and keep all of your variables separate for each call to the recursive function. So I'm going to show you how to um, just write this up in Python, which will be probably a lot easier for you on the exam.